In the CGS 2021 State of the U.S. e-commerce consumer survey, 1,000 U.S. consumers were surveyed together to gather insight and in identify trends from their shopping habit in a post-COVID-19 era. They found out that consumers seek local shopping and homemade goods, but most are still going to online marketplaces. The research also indicates the main motivator of clothing purchases is going back to work and they highly value the live stream shopping online. From this survey, we also know that millennial consumers have shifted attention to buy locally and support small businesses. Locality in fashion is about everything that fast fashion is missing from the context. So, sense of community, the personal connection with the seller or brand, and informing the consumer about who made the garment. So creating new habits of fashion consumption where price tag is clear and justified without compromising on labor falls. So how to build a successful local brand? Know thy consumer. The research of your locality is the greatest business weapon and go and ask people what they want. Do they like the things as they are? On my lectures, going out on streets and asking people about clothing is a vital point of primary research. And it's not easy to do it. Two, include everybody by creating a sense of community, find common grounds, the bridges. So don't mind the gap for the first time. Apply the culture of helpfulness, educate people about kindness. And four, never stop asking questions to your business. What can I do more, better? Do I know national producers? Do I have a feeding room for wheelchair users? Oh, how I navigate communication myself, maybe for blind people. Basically, how can I welcome everybody and make great impact on smaller market? So, um, I just want to go over a few a few points today about um, sustainability, particularly for uh, young young designers who find it quite difficult to get hold of um, sustainable fabrics. So we'll um, just share my screen for, for a few moments and um, go over some points um, um, together. So here we are. Okay, the first thing um, that I wanted to, to say that it is really hard for, for young designers to um, source um, sustainable um, fabrics, but one possibility would be to look and see what's happening locally. Um, with regards to um, to startups in your area or, or your city and try and far, find as far as possible um, people who you, who you can work with and who can sort of contribute towards your, your collection and the fabrics that you're looking for. And then to look at um, some of the big uh, brands, particularly Gabriella Hurst for uh, Cleo, um, Chloe and to read about her story and how she made her brand uh, sustainable and all the ups and downs involved in, in doing this as well. And then when one, uh, one often sees um, uh, designers, uh, this designer, for example, um, Vibsko, he makes his wonderful warm jackets that he tells us are warmer than, than down. And we come to understand that he uses pet bottles, a wood pulp and wool. But we don't really know how, how this was, uh, how, how we got these uh, things together. And could be that he collaborated with people to help him make the sustainable fabric. The other way is to uh, look at institutions like Worth Partnership Projects, for example, go to their web page and you will find a list of, um, of people who have invented, uh, who have innovated sustainable fabrics. And perhaps you could contact them and think about a collaboration with them as well. And then just to realize that there are many, many people all over the world who are collaborating designers, collaborating um, with, with tech people. And um, there are many, many possibilities. You just need to have a look around and see where you can collaborate. Also, there's um, a very good company called Bolt Threads. They do the most super innovative work and one can look to them for inspiration as well. And um, lastly, um, in, uh, in uh, Portugal, um, um, Monica invented um, cork thread and uh, it took her several years to, to develop it. 
And now uh, many uh, young um, designers um, collaborate with her and uh, she produces uh, cork uh, products for their um, innovative fashion. So those are just a, a, few, a few things that, that we can think about. But just to go back to it again, it's collaborating with local people and uh, working together as a team and coming up with things that are really, really new and, and innovative. And of course, making this new collaboration as part of your storytelling as well. So I wish you a lot of um, good luck and uh, a lot of good fortune uh, with your collaboration. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Rafał Stanowski. I'm a lecturer of Krakow School of Art and Fashion Design, actually PR director. And today I'm going to speak to you about public relations, so about the PR. So let me share the screen with you to share uh, and to uh, show you uh, some matters which are connected to the PR. So, as you see, PR is to be or not to be for fashion. What I mean? I mean that fashion brand, fashion industry is very much connected, or you can even say addicted to PR. So, what is PR and what it, why it's so important? Look at those words said by the big fashion designer, Karl Lagerfeld. Fashion is more attitude than clothing details. So every move you make, every step you take, you have to be fashion. It's very important because the fashion industry, fashion people, they look at you, they hear you, and they check if you are really keen on fashion. What is PR for? Why we use PR? What is PR? So the most important first thing is to build an image. You have to build an image of someone who is in fashion, who is doing fashion, who is doing great fashion, who is doing great design. So it's very important to have this kind of image. PR is also media relations. So you have to uh, build and then have good relations with journalists, stylists, photographers, influencers, all those people who are sharing information around about you. Why you are doing this? You are doing this to promote yourself and your brand. And of course, there, there, there are sometimes some crises some image crises, then you have to uh, overcome it. And it's also a matter of uh, PR. So one of the most important thing is how to speak efficiently to your customer. That's why we use uh, PR. So the first thing you have to do is to define your client. Who are you working for? Who you want to sell your clothes to? So you have to build an image of your client. Uh, how old is she or he? So the sex is important. Uh, where this person is living? How much does this person earn? It's important because of pricing. All those things you see here, what else does your client buy? It's very, very important to know that. If you know that, you know you have the image of your client, then you can use proper medias to speak to this client. You can use social medias. Of course, each social media has a bit different audience. TikTok is for the youngers. Facebook is for the adults. Uh, uh, so you, you, you have to uh, check uh, uh, the social medias which are proper to your uh, customer. You can use also traditional media like press, radio, television. Of course, you have to work with influencers, but you can't work with everybody. There is no influencer who will be good for each brand. 
So you can see here two big influencers, very big, by like Kim Kardashian, but very different. So it depends on your brand, on your concept, on your idea, who you will wear, work with. Of course, I suggest also, it's very hard to uh, cooperate with Kim Kardashian if you're a young designer. So look for influencers among your friends, uh, among your even family, and look for the nano influencers, the small ones who have the audience. It will be much easier to cooperate with them. And also a good thing to, to promote your brand yourself is to organize something. You, you cannot stay only in, in, in internet. Uh, of course, internet is very important, but speaking to living people, showing your works to living people is as much important as internet is. So organize some kind of performance event. You don't have to uh, spend much money on it. Sometimes the idea is the most important thing. And the last thing you have to remember is what Albert Einstein said, plans are nothing, planning everything. So your success needs to be planned. So please plan everything and then realize your plans. Thank you very much. It was nice to um, give this knowledge to you and uh, I wish you good luck and I'm keep keeping and crossing fingers for your plans and for your big future. Thank you. Hi guys, hello from Dubai. My name is Marcela Danielova. I'm a consultant to brand, brands and individuals in the creative industry. I live in Dubai. As you can hear, there's a prayer behind me. I hope it's not going to interfere in the video too much. Um, I was asked by the European Fashion Accelerator to answer a few questions for you in regards to uh, the fashion industry in the Middle East. When I'm going to be referring to Middle East, I'm referring to the GCC country specifically, which is the Gulf Collaboration Council. And these countries include UAE, Oman, Qatar, Bahrain, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia. Um, the first question is, describe key factors to do business with the, with the Middle East. How far and close are they from our view of fashion? So key factors to do business with any market are know your client know your product um, your positioning and your price points so knowing your client means knowing the demographics here in the gcc countries it's important to know that the local clients are in minority that the local population is in minority they they are about 10 percent the rest of the population here the 90 percent uh, is created from expatriates from all over the world from china from uh, russia from in india indonesia from Africa, from UK, Britain, um, United States. So it's really a global client. Um, it's a melting pot of nationalities, very diverse. So you need to know who you who you want to serve and cater most. So the good thing is to do a little bit of a demographic research. Uh, yes, we have a big population coming from Asia and here that is also, for example, dressing modestly. So modesty, modest wear, and uh, resort wear are a big part of our collections. So when you construct your collection, it's always good to have an option of a modest wear. I'm not referring to traditional modest wear as abayas or um, traditional modest wear. I'm talking about clothes that are not revealing or too sexy and can be layered and worn in a contemporary way to create the modest look. So this is a good, uh, good to have in collections. Also, as I said, resorts, because we are mostly summer here, so resorts work really well, but there is a, uh, there's a lot of brands that, uh, that cater to, to summers and holidays and resorts. But I think combination, um, you know, structuring your collection smartly, it's important. Um, knowing your price points, the client is always looking for new brands that have uh, new design propositions and our niche. So always be, um, you know, don't get discouraged because uh, we, my next question is, is Middle East focused only on luxury? No, the clients are very well educated in luxury. They know quality products, but they are very much open to new design propositions, new brands that have 
you know, good price points and um, they have something new to offer. So creativity is always welcome. And again, you are serving to the global clients. So uh, Dubai is really a global village and uh, uh, you don't really need to take in consideration too many factors to do business in, in Dubai. Uh, but it's very competitive because yes, the client has access to all the luxury brands here and it's very, very fashion savvy. How much sustainable design is important for Middle East? Sustainable design is important for any market and I think it will be more and more important in the future. So my advice to you is always try to see if you can have an ethical angle, sustainable angle and um, or, or a story that, um, that, that works for the clients. And as you know, we have Expo 2020. Uh, Dubai is hosting Expo 2020 now and it's all about sustainability future and um, and technology. So, you know, these questions have been discussed in in Dubai, in the fashion industry since many years already uh, through different platforms. So yes, we are very much aware of this here. And um, I hope I answered these questions as much as I could in this very short time. And if you have any other questions, I will be happy to help you. The team has my contacts. Please do not hesitate me to send it. Do, do not hesitate to send me any.